In this video, we will go over guitar pedal input and output impedances and how to measure them in LT Spice. First, we should probably go over what is impedance. Jack Orman summed it up the best by saying, impedance is the amount of resistance to an AC signal. The main difference between resistance and impedance is that resistance is the same at any frequency, whether it be a 0 Hz DC signal or a 100 MHz AC signal, where impedance can and often does vary with frequency and is usually a complex interaction of components instead of a value of a single simple component like a resistor. A guitar pickup has inductance, resistance, and capacitance, and that qualifies as a complex signal source, which in here we will label as Z1. A guitar pedal also has its own impedance to the guitar signal at its input, which is represented here as Z2 going to ground. So, how does this have an effect on our sound and signal strength? Let's assume for this example that we have impedances that are fixed values across the audio band of interest. The Z1 pickup impedance is driving the input of the pedal, which has the Z2 input impedance going to ground. This creates a voltage divider between the two impedances, which means we will see a volume drop before the signal enters the guitar pedal. How much? Well, let's do some math here in this example. If we hit a loud chord on this 60s Fender Stratocaster on its bridge pickup, which has an impedance of around 6k, this chord will be at about maybe 1 volt peak to peak. This will go into a 60s Arbiter fuzz face, which has a low impedance of about 5k. To solve this voltage divider, we go voltage in times Z2 over the sum of Z1 plus Z2 which is 1 volt times 5k over 11k, which is equal to 0.45 volts, or 450 millivolts. This is a loss of more than 50% of our original pickup output. As you can see, the input impedance of the fuzz face has loaded down the pickup and caused a severe loss of signal. If we replace the fuzz face with the Proco Rat 2, which has a much higher input impedance of 1 mega ohm, let's see how that affects the signal. Now, it'll be 1 volt times 1 million over 1 million 6,000, which equals 0 0.994 volts. Now we've only lost less than a percent of our signal, which is way better. As of output impedance, the idea is that it needs to be at the level of a guitar pickup or less, with less being better. It also has the advantage that it is consistent across the audio band with very little inductance or capacitance which would be inherent in a guitar pickup, making the signal coming out of your guitar pedal a bit more predictable. Also, being a low output impedance means more current can flow, and that means the circuit can push whatever it needs to as hard as it needs to, coming after it. If the output impedance was high, the current can't flow as well, and it might not have the strength to drive the next thing in line. So, in a lot of guitar pedals, it is preferred to have a high input impedance and a low output impedance. Exceptions can be found though, such as a discrete transistor pedal like the fuzz face, the tone bender, or the transistor-based big muffs. Okay, enough with theory. Let's go take a look at a pedal and get some measurements. I've opened LT Spice, and here we have our boost pedal from the last video. I'm going to add some hard clipping diodes to it, like you would find on an MXR Distortion Plus, but I'm going to use some silicon 1N4148 diodes just to spice it up. Man, you corny! Before we take a measurement for impedances, let's take a look at the waveform. I'm going to change the sine wave from 132 millivolts peak to 500 millivolts peak, or 1 volt peak to peak. Let's go to simulate and run, and here's our starting signal, as we would expect, 500 volts peak, or 1 volt peak to peak, and at the end, we can see that there are some clipped off edges on the waveform. This is hard clipping. You can also tell that the signal's output has actually dropped a bit, because now we're only outputting eh, maybe 650 millivolts peak, or 1.3 volts peak to peak. 
You can see that the amplified signal had its tops and bottoms cut off, and this occurs at the forward voltages of those hard clipping diodes. Depending on the diode type that we use and its forward voltages determines where these chop marks are going to happen in regards to voltage. Now that we have made this into a distortion pedal, let's take a look at its impedances. First thing we're going to do is close out of this, and then we're going to change the input signal. And we're going to put under AC amplitude 1 for 1 volt, and then press OK. So now under the input V1 right here, you can see we now have a AC space 1 indicating that 1 volt AC signal. So now we're going to click on the simulate menu and go down to edit simulation command. Here we have our transient information from earlier, but we're going to skip over that and go over to the AC analysis tab. Under here, we will select the type of sweep being decade. For number of points, we'll put in 101. For a start frequency, we'll put in 1K for 1 kilohertz. And for a stop frequency, we'll type in 1 meg for 1 megahertz. And then we'll press OK. So now let's go up to simulate and then click run. So on our simulation screen here in the black space, let's right mouse click and let's go down to add traces. And here we're going to look for the voltage for the input guitar signal. We call this input right here so it'll show up as volts input. When we click on that once that shows up down here on the expression bar. Let's click here in the expression bar to get our cursor down there and then press the forward slash key for divide. Next, we're going to look for the current for our guitar input signal, which is V1. So if we find I, which is the symbol for current of V1, and click on that once. Now we have volts over current, which anyone who knows Ohm's law knows that that equals resistance, or in this case, impedance. So let's press OK. Now this screen's a little bit messy, so we're going to have to clean it up first. In this video, it's not going to really matter about the phase, so we're going to right click here on the right hand side and click on the button that says don't plot phase. On the left hand side, we're going to right click there and then under representation, we're going to go from decibel to linear and then press OK. So what we have here is our resistance values now being shown across the frequency range that we were looking at from one kilohertz to one megahertz. Now, when a guitar pedal company typically shows the impedances of their pedal, they're typically looking at one kilohertz and they're looking with all their knobs up at noon, typically. Some places do it a little bit different, but that's the general gist. But in this case, you can see there's not much deviation between one kilohertz and 10 kilohertz, no matter what the knob is set to. And in this case, we have a 5 mega ohm input impedance, which is really, really good. That's not going to load down your pickups whatsoever. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a quirk in LT Spice. Not so much as a quirk, but it's going to throw someone off that they're not expecting this. So I'm going to add a capacitor to the input of my line. And we're just going to make it a small one, something like 10 nanofarad. And we're going to bring that to ground. We'll just add that as if it were something like you're trying to remove radio frequencies or whatnot. So we'll just draw that. All right, so we, now we have our capacitor here. If I go to simulate and go to run again, take a look at that input impedance. That's terrible. However, adding this capacitor should not affect the input impedance that much. The problem with the simulator is it's thinking that it's got a path to ground really easily through this capacitor, which is not the case. So when modeling a guitar pedal for input impedance, one way that you can kind of fake it is right click on that capacitor that's going to ground and then put in something for its equivalent series resistance that's very high. Like I'm going to put in, you know, 100 meg. So now I know that's not its real equivalent series resistance, but that'll force the simulator to draw this a lot more correctly. So if we go back up here to simulate and go to run, now all of a sudden we have a happier input impedance. There still is a drop, but this is probably a lot closer to the real input impedance properties of this pedal. Still, 
4.76 mega ohms is really good. So next we're going to deal with output impedance. The first thing we need to do is create a voltage signal for our output. So if we click on the components and go to voltage and hit OK, and we can drop that symbol down. Next we can give it ground and then wire that in. And then the positive side of this voltage supply will go into the output of the pedal. And then we'll hit escape to clear out. Next, we need to set the actual signal. So we'll right click on this V3 and then click on advanced. And then under small signal AC analysis, we'll put in for AC amplitude one volt. Press OK. Now we're going to disconnect the input signal from our pedal. So press F5, that'll bring up the scissors. And then we're going to cut the line right here where there's input. And then hit escape. If we were to run the simulation right now, we should probably get a flat line. And we do. What we're going to do is right click on this V input over I of V1 and select delete this trace. So now we're back to a clear screen. Next, we're going to go up to, up to the uh, simulation here and right click and go to add traces. And now what we're going to look for is the voltage of the output. and down here, we're going to add our forward slash for divide, and then we're going to look for the current of V3. So let's find V3's current, I of V3, and then press OK. And here we have our output impedance cu uh, curve and slope. So again, most people when they're declaring output impedance is usually looking at the 1 kilohertz mark. And you can see for the most part between one kilohertz and 10 kilohertz, it's pretty flat with the exception of one of the knob settings, probably either all the way off or all the way on. But you can see here that this is well under, well actually even all the way up into the 100 kilohertz marks in the worst case scenario knob turn, uh, our output in pins here is well under 1K. Actually it looks like it's gonna be well under 600 ohms of of output impedance. So that's very, very good. There's not a lot of resistance there, so that's going to allow this pedal to drive whatever's in front of it as hard as it needs to doing whatever it's doing. So there you go. That's how you can figure out output impedance. Now one of the interesting things here is that little trick that we did right here with this capacitor, if we had one of these on the output, you'll notice that it's not going to really affect things too, too much. So if I put one here and round it, why I'd exactly do this maybe for uh, a high pass or a low pass filter getting rid of really high frequencies. But if I set this to something like, I don't know, one nanofarad and then rerun the simulation, it does change how that curve affects things, but you can still see that everything's still within the 400 to 500 ohm resistance range, which again, this isn't going to be a perfect simulation but this is going to give you a very good ballpark. The idea with output impedance is so long as it's under 10K, which is relative to kind of like what a guitar pickup is, you're doing good. So even in this worst case scenario, you're still ways away from being a bad output impedance. So that's it for this video. If you like these kind of videos, press that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Also, don't be afraid to leave comments in the comment section below if you need any help with something, someone down there will probably help you out. If you wish to support us, please visit our web store at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au and check out our PCB projects and kits. This would really help us out a lot. Anyways, that's all for now, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.